You know, I collect a lot of puzzles. And I mean like a lot of puzzles. From wooden frame tray puzzles to cardboard frame tray puzzles to actual regular jigsaw puzzles. A lot of just vintage old puzzles with cool artwork on them. They're a problem in the sense that I have to go through, especially the jigsaw ones, and make sure all the pieces are there. So it takes time, it takes effort, but for some reason I'm always drawn to them when I go to an estate sale, and I always just keep picking up puzzles that have cool images on them. And right when I start thinking, you know, I gotta stop doing this, I sell a bunch of them. So let's take a look at some of the vintage toys, games, books, and puzzles that I sold today. So first up, let's start with the puzzles that I sold today. One is a wooden peg puzzle. This is a puzzle that has just different farm animals on them. And it's really just a plank of wood with animals side by side. You know, it's meant for early learners. Probably one of the more simplistic and strange puzzles that I've picked up. Next up is actually part of a series of puzzles that I can't tell if they're handmade or if they were actually just really old and this is how they used to make them and they're unbranded. But we'll start with this wooden frame tray puzzle. It is a cat and the cat is just carved right into a piece of wood. It looks like it was painted with possibly house paint. And underneath the cat sitting wearing a bow around its neck, there's a little saucer of milk for it. And I don't have any dates on these puzzles, but I'm pretty sure they're vintage or just homemade. I don't know. Next up is this bunny. The bunny is wearing clothes for some reason, and it actually kind of looks like it's a puppet of some sort. It doesn't really look like a bunny except for the ears. Its red shirt and pants are there because, I don't know, maybe it has a job interview. Not really sure. This one, actually, they painted the background green on it. So it wasn't just like the other one using wood with varnish. This one is full on painted. And then the next one is a soldier, maybe. Maybe it could be a band leader. I'm not entirely sure, but it's wearing a big jaunty hat that has a nice flourish down the middle. And he's standing in a red uniform that's kind of nondescript. So I don't know, soldier, I'm not entirely sure. It actually has less pieces than the other ones and it's very blue. And these are some of the frame tray puzzles that I got. And I was actually at a sale this previous weekend and there were more like these. I've never really run across these nondescript wooden puzzles before. And there was a whole stack of them. And oddly enough, I was like, no, I still have a bunch of these, so I won't pick them up. And then instantly I got home and these were sold. And I'm like, well, I should have picked up those other ones. Maybe those will go too. I don't know. You live and learn. And another thing that I get because I always love getting them. I loved getting them when I was a child is Smurf glasses. I mean, this is a Smurf glass, but it's Gargamel, so he's not really a Smurf, but he is chasing a Smurf, him and Azriel, around a glass. Oh, actually, it looks like they startled him. I was thinking it was going to be a nice little revolving chase scene, but instead, it kind of looks like they're running towards him. You used to be able to get these with like a Happy Meal or something at McDonald's, I think. Nah, now I can't remember. I'm going to say McDonald's. And over on my game shelf, something that I just listed. It's the game of headache. Now this is from the 1960s and it's kind of like trouble. Um, as a matter of fact, I would say it's exactly like trouble, but for some reason it's called headache. I should actually do some research on this because I'd like to know, did headache steal the idea from trouble? Did trouble steal the idea from the headache game? Did it evolve into this? Did they rebrand it? I need to find that out. It's actually really hard to push this this way. There we go. No other games really did this pop-o-matic sort of thing in the middle. I love how all the little pieces are just flying around. But it's literally the same thing as Trouble. I'll give you Trouble. That's from the commercial, I think. I also sold this 45 from a series of 45s that I have that feature a character called Dr. Swan. And this particular one, he teaches manners. The whole series was called Learn About, and some of them were like about safety, some of them were about colors, some of them were about the alphabet, so it was a little bit of, I don't know, preschoolish type knowledge to get you ready for school, and it was all done with a funny doctor who would take the kids around while wearing a top hat. And next up is a vintage pull toy that's uh, from the 1960s, I think. This one is a Fisher Price jalopy, and it's got itself a Little clown bobbing its head in there, not really sure why. And the wheels are all uneven, so it'll go boink da doink da doink da doink like that when it's driving around. Also, I always liked the way that they did the 
graphics on these wooden toys. I have a couple of them. They would just adhere these like really cool graphics that are shaped to the toy. It's like it's head bobbing around while it's talking to us. Hey, over here, look at, look at, look at. You think that clown thinks it's better than me? No booty clown, it does not think that it's better than you. Can it even dance? No booty clown, it does not think it's better than you. It doesn't even have a body, it's just a head. That's right, you watch it. Shake it, baby. Uh, no one. Yeah. Uh. It's not dancing, it's in a car. That's right, I'm the dancing clown. Okay. You stay away from dancing clowns, I'm the one. Okay, I will let you know if I find another dancing clown. That's right. And those are the vintage toys, games, books, and puzzles that I sold today.